What's going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays and I am back on the channel and yeah, bringing some more Diablo 4 content your way and today we're going to be doing a brand new build when it comes to the Rogue and this one's going to be completely different from the ranged one that we've had already set up on the channel so massive thank you for anyone that's already contributed over to there and seen that. Um, honestly the views on that have just blown us away. It genuinely is really appreciated. Uh, but in terms of this one we're going for a nuke build with this and it's kind of like a twist. It's kind of like a spin on the, the main kind of like twisting build. Uh, but what we're looking to be able to do is get some chain explosions going off for the main majority of damage. Now, while Twisting Blades is going to be the main skill in terms of being able to apply some decent damage out there, it's going to be our main way of being able to do some single target damage to take down bosses. It's, it's kind of the build is pretty much more designed to be able to be an absolute mob killer and being able to watch everyone just detonate and watch mobs just get absolutely wiped away is absolutely hilarious and it genuinely brings a smile to my face every single time I manage to be able to pull it off. So we're going to be able to discuss about what it needs in terms of like gear, what we need in terms of like skill tree, what we need in terms of like paragon, what are the best things to be able to aim for, and we're going to cover all that in this video. If you do enjoy this and you don't learn something useful with ourselves, then make sure to drop that like and subscribe, it really does help the channel out, and we're looking to be able to push into that 5k kind of subscriber mark, especially with the Diablo 4 content. But with all that said and done, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into it. Oh. So as we always like to do when it comes to builds, we like to start with the skill tree and this video is going to be no different. We are going to be starting when it comes to our basic skills with the good old trusted puncture. Now in terms of puncture, we want to be able to go for enhanced and we also want to go for fundamental. This is just the most like kind of like standard way in terms of being able to set up puncture. It's most reliable when it comes to damage. It's the most reliable in being able to uh, apply vulnerable and vulnerable is especially important when it comes to this build, but we'll discuss that a little bit later on. We also want to be able to use it as a nice de damage dealer and it's just really good, just probably the best kind of like basic skill that does exist when it comes to rogue. So make sure you get that and make sure we're able to get fundamental to be able to throw out three blades. Moving on from there, it's going to be our standard well and trusted pick. This is going to be Twisted and Blade. Now you're going to notice that not straight away we haven't got extra points into here. That's because I am messing about with an exotic and we'll cover that in the gear section. But uh, you can put extra points into here to be able to increase the amount of damage. And we'll talk about how important that damage is going to be a little bit later. In terms of Twisting Blades though, what well, this is as standard, you stab an enemy, it's fair, they take an extra bit of damage while they're being impaled, and then after so much time it returns back. We're able to improve this with combo points, we'll talk about the how important the specialization is a little bit later on as well. You can see there's going to be a lot to be able to cover when it comes to this build to be able to maximize its damage output. What's really important though is that we do go into Enhanced to be able to deal even more damage when it's returning and we also want to go for Advanced Twisting Blades to be able to get our cooldowns to be able to reduce down. This is going to be vitally important because we are using two imbuement skills and we want to be able to reduce the amount of cooldown that we have on those. Lastly, before we move from on from the core skills, we do have two points into Sturdy to give ourselves a little bit of damage reduction, allowing us to be able to stay alive inside the fight, and then three points into Siphoning Strikes, which is going to be our main way of being able to heal and have that sustain in the fight. Moving on from there though, we do then get to go into our agility skills and as you can see when it comes to it, we do have two points into shadow step, but two points is going to be from our gear, but we primarily use dash and um, feel free to be able to mess about with whichever one you prefer. You can feel free to be able to swap dash into for shadow step, but the real reason why we do go for dash is because it is able to be imbued and it also has extra charges. It's also great to get into a fight, it's great to get out of a fight and because it can be imbued and because we can line up a bunch of enemies all together in a straight line that allows us to be able to infuse them with our ice and with our shadow which we'll discuss a little bit later on. We only want the one point into our enhanced dash here to be able to get the 15% increased critical strike damage. That's quite important. We want to be able to deal as much damage as possible when it comes to this build especially against certain targets. Uh, and if you can get a, a couple of pieces of gear to be able to roll with extra ranks into dash, notice that this reduces the amount of cooldown that it has on the ability, meaning that you get your dashes back faster. This is especially important for mobility, but once again it is great to be able to be able to spread around that extra critical strike damage. Before we do move on though, we always go for three points into weapon mastery. This is vitally important. We do use swords in this build, and that means that because we do have two equipped, we get a nice 18% increased damage. Moving on from there, we do go into our subterfuge skills, and this is where we're going to get our Poison Trap. Now, Poison Trap is a great way to be able to start resetting our imbuement skills, but it's also a great way to be able to do some crowd control, some extra damage, and a great way to be able to knock enemies down. 
We have one point into here to be able to do some decent damage. We then grab Enhanced Poison Trap to be able to knock down those enemies for 1.5 seconds, giving us a little bit of breathing room, especially if we are going to be the inside the middle of a certain mob. And then lastly, we do pick up Countering Poison Trap, which is only on a 30% chance to be able to reset our imbuement skill cooldowns, but it's still definitely useful. It's a great way to be able to reduce those cooldowns, and because we do have two, it's a great way to be able to get double value from activating the Poison Trap. We then move on from there into our imbuement, and this is where a majority of our points are going to be spent because we want to be able to get a lot out of this. Mainly, we want to be able to use shadow imbuements. This is a great way. You probably already know the, how this kind of works, but in terms of if you don't, I'm going to briefly summarize it. It infuses your weapons or your two imbuable skills with shadow damage, meaning they don't do physical anymore. This then impacts with a, an enemy that's been hit for six seconds with shadow, uh, and they will detonate after six seconds for a certain amount of damage, or if you manage to kill them, they will also detonate as well. Every single time you put a point into this increases the amount of explosion damage that it will be doing, and this is also going to be vitally important because this is going to be where the nuke aspect kind of comes in. There is an other, another kind of factor that also increases the amount of damage that we will be doing for the nuke, so it's not just by itself, uh, but Shadow Imbuement is largely important when it comes to this. We do also grab the Enhanced to be able to increase 15% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies infected by Shadow Imbuement, and lastly we go for Blended so that every single one of our exp explosions from it will make enemies caught within that vulnerable for 2 seconds. Vitally important once again, and so not only are we getting damage, we're also getting applying vulnerable and we're spreading it out everywhere. We do put one point into Shadow Crash, we do put one point into Consuming Shadows to be able to give ourselves some extra energy. We have three points into Precision Imbuement so that every single one of our imbued skills will have 9% increased critical strike chance. That allows us to be able to increase the like, lethality of our abilities, it gives us a great nice DPS kind of input. Now in terms of like the other abilities, we could go for Poison Imbuement, but I think the real reason why this works so well is because of Cold Imbuement. Now this doesn't get too much love out in the community, I don't think, but Cold Imbuement is a great way to be able to increase your single target damage, and that's vitally important when it comes to this. Being able to go for Cold Imbuement, we only want one point into this. Technically, you do not need any extra points from your gear. Uh, so I'm just currently looking for a new a new headset to be able to get some nice uh, cooldown reduction or something like that to help me out. Uh, but as it currently stands, I do have two extra points into it, giving me a 30% chill effect every time I hit an enemy. Uh, but what we want is one point into here, one point into Enhanced Cold, cold Imbuement giving us a lucky hit chance to be able to make enemies vulnerable. Not really that largely important, but the main one is going to be Mixed Cold Imbuement, meaning that we now deal 20% extra damage to cold uh, crowd control enemies, and we double this bonus against frozen enemies, meaning we're doing an extra 40% to any kind of like frozen enemy that's going to be in front of us, and this gets compounded even more with three points into Frigid Finesse, allowing us to deal 15% increased damage to chilled enemies, but if we do go up against a frozen enemy, that means we're getting an extra 30. This means that's standard for from just being able to use our cold imbuement and being able to hit a frozen enemy, we are now dealing an extra 70% increased damage. It's in this massive damage increase, as you can tell. Moving on from there, we have our ultimate tree, and we're not picking up an ultimate ability for this build. Um, you could potentially mess about with being able to take off Poison Trap if you really, really want to, and you could use Shadow Clone as a great way to be able to get, increase your uh, single target damage, uh, but I'm very happy with how Poison Trap kind of works in this build. You definitely also could get away with being able to use Death Trap, as this allows you to be able to suck enemies in with Prime Death Trap, uh, and that is also a great way, but uh, I, I'm not a massive fan of the cooldown, and we do need combo points to be able to pop, pop off in terms of the amount of damage we'll be doing. So therefore we, what we will be doing is putting two points into innovation, giving us a lucky hit chance of 20% to be able to gain 8 energy. Uh, obviously that will uh, change depending on the ability that we are using, so um, Twisting Blades in this case is only 33% chance of lucky hits, but we do like to be able to increase the amount of chances that we can do lucky hits, and that's where this is where we're going to be picking up three points into Second Wind, and we're also getting three points into Alchemist Fortune, meaning that uh, while we are using our imbuement skills, we're um, going through our energy as standard, we are pretty much going to have an extra 30% on top of that, making this combo so much more consistent. We also have three points into Trap Mastery, which is another reason why we pick up Poison Trap, allowing us, when it, when it pops, to be able to have a 12% increased critical strike chance against vulnerable and crowd control enemies, not just the ones that have been hit by the trap, but also every single enemy that exists on the screen. 
Moving on from there though, and this is where we're going to have our key passive, and this is going to be one that doesn't seem to be get mentioned too much around the community, but this is the reason why the nuke kind of works, and that's going to be victimized. This is on a lucky hit, dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has a 30% chance to cause an explosion, dealing 23% of the original damage to them and surrounding enemies. So what we're going to be having is two sets of explosions popping off. We have the Shadow Imbuement going to be infecting enemies, meaning that after six seconds or if if we manage to kill them they're going to have an explosion deal so much damage applying vulnerable to more enemies and then because of the vulnerable because of the because of how the explosion kind of damage seems to work victimize is then going to proc as well because of how much of the lucky hit chance we are increasing by grabbing second wind and alchemist fortune and potentially through some of our gear pieces allowing us to be able to pop off and deal 23 percent of the original damage which has been infected from our imbuement skills and you can tell because of the imbuement skills how much increase of the damage we're going to be hitting with that so with that single shot and then 23% of that is then going to go into our multipliers again allowing us to be able to detonate everyone that's around us now while I don't have any concrete proof that that's kind of how the damage numbers kind of work um, what I believe is happening in terms of like the detonation because of how easy it is to be able to take everyone out because 23% is such a small multiplier I, I do believe it is double dipping into the damage multipliers that, that explains why we're able to just get such a massive damage increase in terms of like the explosion uh, but this can get compounded even more because of the, the way that we uh, kind of go into our skills so you can use shadow imbuement to be able to set up the combo uh, but if you are looking to be able to maximize the amount of damage that you're going to be trying to get out there you need to be able to have a frozen enemy and then hit them with cold imbuements this means that we're then getting the full benefit of this 70 percent damage increase and that damage number once we kill that enemy once we trigger uh victimize to be able to do the explosion that's then going to get that 23 percent of that damage is then going to be put through every other multiplier that we've got and that's what's going to do the massive detonation you've seen on screen. So before we talk about gear, let's talk about what's important when it comes to Paragon. Now you do want to be able to move your way through the board because this is a Twisting Blades and because it is using imbuement skills, it's largely very, pretty much the same in terms of the like the main boards that you want to be able to go for when it comes to like, a standard Twisting Blades like a meta build. So uh, I, me personally, I am currently trying out uh, being able to use uh, the Control Glyph to be able to do extra damage to crowd control enemies. This is pretty much standard I think because in terms of like the amount of of damage but we're also getting extra multipliers on top of chilled or frozen enemies uh, which is another great way to be able to stack up that single target damage ready for that big explosion we're also going for the legendary nodes of eldritch bounty because we are using imbued skills that makes sense we are going for a cheap shot to be able to deal extra damage to crowd control enemies we are picking up rare nodes to be able to increase that even further but in terms of like the extra glyphs you can try out infusion uh, so if you are able to get to extra glyph nodes uh, in infusion is going to be a decent one because this also helps you out with your cooldowns but i think exploit is probably going to be the best one to be able to go for and that's why i'm now going to start working my way to this glyph socket right here the reason why is because exploit is a great way to increase the multiplier we've got on vulnerable enemies but the additional bonus if we get that to proc means that we don't have too much trouble being able to proc vulnerable in the first place allowing us to be able to take advantage of victimize to the to the fullest of its extent and that means that the first time we hit an enemy for three seconds they are now vulnerable we can still reapply it with uh, through normal means uh, but through this just from having this glyph active and meeting the bonus we're able to just get that as standard and i think that's going to be vitally important to be able to increase the consistency of this build so we'll touch on the specialization and once again combo points is going to be the main factor when it comes to this. This is because we are able to increase the amount of single target damage uh, through the use of combo points and from using puncture. Uh, so that means that Twisting Blades will pretty much have a 100% damage increase. Uh, it, it does work out a little bit less than that, but it's around about 100% damage increase from what it would have been doing at 3 points. And that means that because we are increasing that single target damage, Cold Imbuement on top of it, you can see where the multiplayer start to get a little crazy, and that's where that big massive explosion is going to come in. So let's have a look at the gear then. So the gear is what we're going to kind of like need to get some damage reduction because we are going to be in the middle of mobs. We want to be able to get some uh, extra crowd control in there. We want to be able to increase the multipliers 
as much as possible and there is one really good unique that I would recommend for this. Now let's just touch on that one first and foremost because that's probably going to be a key part. Don't need this one but it definitely helps out because this increases the chances of dealing with frozen enemies. That's going to be Frostburn and this increases your critical strike chance, it increases your cold damage, it increases your freeze duration and it also is a great way to be able to get some of your primary resource back because we are a lucky hit build meaning that we are maximizing the amount of time that we will get some of that back. The main part is because it's on a lucky hit, we have up to a 20% chance to freeze enemies for two seconds. This happens very consistently because of the amount of hits that a rogue can put out, whether it's through twisting blades, whether it's from having the blades rotate around you, whether it's from uh, your damage ticks when it comes to your poison trap, when it comes to your dash because you're dashing through bunches of enemies at the same time. There's so many ways to be able to get this to proc and puncture in of itself because it's able to throw out three blades is another great way to be able to get it to work as well. So if you were looking for one specific unique to be able to help you out in this regard, Frostburn is the one, but feel free to be able to mess about with different kind of gloves. The main ways to be able to do it are going to be ways to increase the amount of damage that Twisting Blades can do, so you are looking out for some nice multipliers, some nice damage multipliers, but also extra ranks into Twisting Blades, increasing the amount of damage that the ability can do in the first place. So in terms of like the main things, we are looking to be able to get damage reduction, that's where the aspect of might is going to come in. We also have the aspect of disobedience to be able to increase our armor, once again giving us some staying power in the middle of a, in the middle of a mob, so we can use this to the maximum ability. Uh, we've then gone for uh, Arkham Falls of the Protector. Uh, and the re we want to use this combo. Now you can get a, an, uh, an exotic that will, or um, a unique, sorry, uh, that's really good in terms of like once you heal yourself above 100% health, you then get a barrier that stays on active all the time. This is kind of like a discount or a budget version of being able to do that because once you hit an elite enemy, you get a barrier. And then we combine that with uh, what we've cut on our crossbow, uh, which is going to be the, uh, the consulted crane, um, crane quin. I think it's pronounced, uh, but you deal for anywhere between 30 to 50% increased damage while you have a barrier active. Now it is doubled because it has been put on the crossbow, but because this is such a massive damage increase, and this is going to be across all damage that we have, it makes sense to be able to have this one on our build. Now you could technically try out Edge Masters, but that's going to be just purely on your abilities, whereas I believe having this uh, this kind of aspect on our build means that we are able to increase our skill damage as well as the extra damage that we can do on top of that. Uh, in terms of the boots though, we do have uh, going for the uh, Mangler's Runic Cleat. Uh, this gives us the aspect of being able to uh, have a vulnerable enemy once we hit them, has a chance to be able to daze them. It's a great way to be able to stay in a fight once again because we are applying as much vulnerable as possible and it's a great way to be able to like stop some of the attacks coming in towards you. On the amulet, we do have casting an imbuement skill will trigger an imbued explosion around yourself, applying the imbuement effects and for a decent amount of damage of the same type. This is vitally important as well because if you use the cold imbuement, this is a great way to be able to start using the uh, like the chilled as well as a start stacking up ready to be able to get to frozen status. Uh, if you use it on shadow, it's a great way to be able to apply shadow in a group around you. It's also a great, it's also an extra damage uh, function on top of that, and this can also proc a victimize, which is a great way to be able to start proccing that as well. You can see how we're kind of working our way into that as well. Uh, we then go into imbuement skills have increased potency. This is a great way to be able to increase the uh, that how much chill or how much um, like for, for, uh, cold damage we will be doing when it comes to our cold imbue. It also increases the amount of damage that our explosions when it comes to shadow damage will be doing as well. It's overall a decent one. I don't. I, I'm still messing about with this one, but I, it has done me quite a nice uh, like kind of some favors out there. Uh, so I haven't swapped it off just yet. Uh, we also got uh, being able to hit a chilled or frozen enemy with a shadow imbued skill creates an explosion. Uh, this is also pretty nice because this is another damage aspect as well. So if you do, go, go, depending on which way you use your skills, if you do use your chilled first and you, you apply chilled and then you go into your shadow, You've got an extra damage function on top of that that can also trigger victimize. You can see how we're kind of working into the matter like the AOE explosions around our character and then being able to trigger as many damage aspects as possible to get those extra explosions procking as well. 
Lastly, in terms of the swords, though, we have gone for, um, uh, you know, to go for Vengeful. Uh, making an enemy vulnerable has a 50, up to a 50% chance to grant 3% increased critical strike chance. And this goes all the way up to 9%. Gives us a little bit more nice consistency in terms of critical hit. And then on top of that, we've also gone for Blade Dancers to be able to have them rotate around ourselves and do a little bit of extra damage. Uh, when they rotate around ourselves, they're applying the Imbue, which is great for the cold. Uh, it's also a great way to be able to proc extra ways to be able to get that victimize going. In terms of the main things that you want to look out for, you want to stack up your vulnerable damage as much as possible. A crossbow is perfect for this. If you can get extra rolls into vulnerable damage, that's also amazing. And you definitely want to look out for that when it comes to your rings as well. Vulnerable damage is the one to look out for. Uh, critical strike chance is also great. Lucky hit chance is also great. Uh, basically anything that can increase the amount of damage that you can do uh, in terms of multipliers is absolutely amazing. Now you can also go for dexterity. Um, that, that will increase the amount of like initial skill damage that you will be doing uh, but because of the explosions they won't be benefiting from those so therefore it kind of makes sense to go for multipliers where you can Lastly, in terms of like the jewelry though, you do we want to be able to go for topazes to be able to uh, get that damage reduction while control impaired. Uh, you want to be able to go for skulls when it comes to your jewelry. I need to slot one in on that one. And you also want to be able to go for emeralds onto your weapons because this increases the amount of critical strike damage you do to vulnerable enemies. We're looking to be able to apply vulnerable here, there and everywhere. Uh, so therefore we want to increase that amount of damage that we can do. And while I don't have the max uh, gems because I haven't leveled high enough just yet, uh, being able to have 42% as standard from just having these four currently uh, is absolutely amazing and that's what allows us to be able to hit those massive damage numbers. But there you go, that is everything done with the build. That's me just currently explaining it. I hope the gameplay in the background has shown you like the main way to be able to get this build to start proccing and like the sheer amount of devastation that it can get done as well. Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. It really does help the channel out. And like I said, if you did enjoy this and you learned something useful with ourselves and you do try this build out, then just do us a favor. Make sure to drop a like and a subscribe. It really does help. But let me know in the comment section down below if you do try this out, if you do try to make it, and if there was anything that you've tested out yourselves that you potentially would change as well, because I'm more than happy to be able to discuss with the community to make sure that this build gets done right. But with all that said and done, that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on our next video.